There are people that are not thrilled with the way that you're taking a look at the perceived contradictions in the gospels. And we don't have to name them here, but there are there are several people that have, I mean, if you just go look at it, you know, Google or YouTube or something, you'll see there are people that have real beef with what you're doing in the book and will put out videos and do interviews about how this is terrible. And I don't know, it's going to end the Christian faith. Not really, but what, <laughs> what is, what is their beef? Like, what is the problem that people have with this? If you were to, um, what's it called? Not a uh, straw man, strong manning, right? Is that where you would say what they're man. steel man? There we go. Well, um, it's mainly one small group uh, yeah. uh, of folks, and um, um, their their beef is that they say that if compositional devices are are if the gospel authors are doing it, then they're fact changing, and that um, changes the the factor of the reliability of the gospels. They'd say, well, they'd be unreliable. We couldn't trust them at all, and I'd say, well, that's just nonsense. That is wooden thinking. It's black and white thinking, um, and it's easily, easily refuted. So, for example, you go to Mark chapter 1, verse 5, and Mark says that the entire region of Judea and every Jerusalemite were going out to John the Baptist and being baptized by him. And uh, the Greek there is is pretty, pretty clear. Um, and the saying, everyone who lived in Jerusalem was going out to see John the Baptist, and they were baptized by him. Okay. Now, we know that the reality of that did not happen that way. Not every Jerusalemite went out to see John the Baptist, and not every one of those were being baptized by him. Certainly, the members of the Sanhedrin didn't go out to get baptized by John the Baptist. Certainly, the high priest did not go out and was baptized by John the Baptist. Yeah. But we understand what Mark is doing there. He's using hyperbole. He's sure. exaggerating for effect, right? Yeah. Everyone and, was there. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have any problems with that. But yet, he has changed the facts of reality. But the message that he is communicating was true. Many mm -hmm. people from Jerusalem and Judea were going out to see John the Baptist, and many of those were being baptized by him. Well, I'd say uh, the same thing is going on with this other stuff. So, Sarah, you mentioned about uh, Jesus healing or raising Jairus' daughter from the dead. Mm -hmm. um, so, what you have is in Mark and in Luke, you have Jairus comes to Jesus and says, my daughter is about to die. Please come heal her. And Jesus says, all right, let's go. Um, and so they had, had start heading back toward Jairus's home. And then that's when the woman comes up with the hemorrhaging problems mm -hmm. and she touches his robe and is healed. And then just after that, some uh, people from uh, Jairus's house comes up to Jairus and says, don't trouble the teacher anymore. Your mm -hmm. daughter has now died. Yeah. Okay. And Jesus says, just have faith, and he goes and he raises her from the dead. Now, when Matthew tells the story, he simplifies it, and he just has Jairus come up to Jesus and say, Jesus, my daughter has just died. Please come heal her. He says, let's go. On the way, the woman comes up, touches his robe, she's healed, and then Jesus goes to Jairus' home and raises her from the dead. There is no servants from Jairus's home that come up and say, don't trouble him. Anymore. Why? Because yeah. he's already dead. Yeah. All right. Now that is, that's the difference there. What uh, Matthew has done is simplified by compressing the story. Um, so he narrates the, the death of the girls happening over a shorter period of time than it actually has. He just simplifies it. And mm -hmm. to be honest, look, um, <laughs> this is the difference I'm generalizing, I'm stereotyping here. There are many differences <laughs> or many exceptions, but this is generally the difference between the way uh, there's the guy version of the story and the girl yeah. version of the story, right? Yeah, yeah. So women like details. They like lots of details. They want to know what happened, where it happened, when it happened, why it happened, how it yeah. happened, what, who was there, what they were doing, what was they their were emotional saying, motivation. Yes, exactly. Guys just want bullet points. Get to yeah. the bottom line. The game's coming on in five minutes. 
<laughs> and yeah. Matthew is giving us the guy version of the story here. And he does this often throughout his gospel. He does mm -hmm. it with raising Jairus's daughter from the dead. He does it with healing the centurion servant. He does it with cleansing the temple. He does it with cursing the fig tree. He does it with sending the, the uh, uh, Disciple. 12 disciples out yeah. after commissioning them. So he's simplifying. Um, so and, he's, and yet yeah, his, he's changing his, the details a little bit. But the message is the same, and that's what matters here. And, and, and yet his gospel, I mean, I know chapters aren't everything, but it is 12 chapters more than Mark's. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes ver there are more verses in a chapter, but still, it's it's obviously longer. Um, well, he has more stories, too. So he's telling, yeah, he's telling more stories. So, I mean, so it, I mean, it, it, it's, it is true. And, and then John is like a whole other thing. I don't know if this is just looking at the synoptics or. It's mainly the synoptics. We do deal with John in there. But it's yeah. mainly the synoptics. Yeah. But like, I mean, it, it's okay for authors to have unique motivations, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they're writing for a different audience. I mean, Luke is commissioned. Uh, John is writing some years later, maybe 10 or 20 or 30 years later than the other Gospels. Maybe he's familiar with them. He's read them. Uh, you know, things have changed. The end of the world hasn't come, you know, for example. So, um, and not to mention, isn't Matthew writing like to a Jewish audience? Yeah, mm -hmm. like Jesus is the new Moses. I don't know if that's a cliche or if that's legit. No, no, that's what most yeah. people think. Well, you know, yeah. one of the, the, the um, thematic emphases of Matthew. So, so yeah, th doesn't that help correct. us though? If 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 we have these, you know, differences in accounts, but that kind of makes the audience that much bigger because you've got, you know, these different audiences being served. Yeah, Evan, I agree with you, and so I like. The detractors that I have, they they just don't like that kind of stuff. They just think that you shouldn't have any change whatsoever. Like I said, they're wooden thinkers. They're black and white thinkers. It's either or. There's just no middle ground here. Um, and I think they make a mistake with the with the genre. They just don't have an artistic sensitivity to them. So you mentioned about Jesus being the new Moses. Well, you know, one of the ways that that um, Matthew does this is he uh displaces geographically displaces mm -hmm. the sermon on the plain to the sermon on the mount so in luke's gospel he comes down off the mount in in and then gives the sermon whereas in matthew's gospel he preaches it at the top of the mount and mm -hmm. some would say well maybe these are two different sermons most scholars don't think that um but the the reason they'd say that matthew has changed this is because um the uh, as Moses was given the law of God mm -hmm. at the top of Mount uh, Sinai, Jesus interprets the law at the top of the Mount. So it's like, hey, you have heard that the ancients were told, um, mm -hmm. thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say I to know. you, yeah. or and I say to you, so he's interpreting the law. He's saying it's not just what's going on in your external actions, it's what's going on inside you as well. If you're looking on a woman to lust for her, you've already committed adultery with mm -hmm. her in, in your heart. He's the new Moses in the sense that he's uh, interpreting the law. And he uh, Matthew gives an artistic rendition of the uh of the genealogy. So if you're looking to reconcile, harmonize the two, you're going to have some real problems. But if you understand that Matthew is doing something artistic, it's an artistic presentation of Jesus's genealogy. I've got a little video on it uh, mm -hmm. about um, that on, uh, I think it's called Musings 2, Musings number two on my YouTube channel. Um, where I explain Matthew's math there and how he's doing things. It's an artistic way that Matthew is saying Jesus is the son of David, the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So as long well, as you understand that the Gospels aren't trying to, uh, and I'm not just saying the Gospels, all ancient biographies, um, if you understand their objective is to paint a literary portrait of their main character, not necessarily to give us a blow-by-blow uh, like what exactly, precisely in every detail, what we would have seen had we been there and watching it. They're more interested in giving us uh, a portrait, an accurate portrait of that individual. Um, if you don't understand that, then you're going to make some generic uh, mistakes in how to interpret the Gospels. Hey folks, I'm Michael Lacona. If you like this video, then please like and subscribe. 
And look, if you like content like this, then consider partnering with us. Go to our website, risenjesus.com forward slash donate.